All right, we are going to be working on 2.1, starting with um, some review, some extra practice on concepts that we need to know. Uh, then we will uh, solve systems by graphing just to keep that fresh. That was from unit one, but we'll continue looking at that throughout the course of unit two so that we don't forget how to do that. And then we are going to talk about solving each system by substitution. We won't actually solve today. We are just going to practice um, substituting in the value uh, from one equation into the other equation. So starting at the top here, um, evaluating each expression, uh, working with our integers just to make sure that we are um, clear on our integer rules and the more that we practice them the better we get. So we have a positive 6 and a negative 8. Our signs are different which means we need to subtract and then keep the sign of the larger number. My larger number is negative and I subtract 8 minus 6 to get 2. For number 2 I have a negative 6 and a negative 3. My signs are the same, which means I will add them together and then keep the sign. In number 3, we are multiplying, and when we multiply, if our signs are the same, we get a positive answer, and if our signs are different, we get a negative answer. In number 3, our signs are different, so we will get a negative and then we multiply 7 times 6 to get 42. So we can follow our sign rules and then follow um, our operation. So again, we have a negative 28 and a positive 7. Our signs are different when we are multiplying or dividing. Um, when our signs are different, we will get a negative answer. And 28 divided by 7 is 4. I don't know why I wrote it huge, but I did. Negative 4. Okay, solving two-step equations. Uh, when we're working with two-step equations, we need to get the variable by itself, which means we need to move uh, this 3 that I've written here in red. We also need to move this 4 that I've highlighted in purple. Um, the 4, the purple 4, is attached to the B with division. So we cannot take care of that first. What we need to do is we need to take care of the 3 that I highlighted in red. To get rid of a uh, minus 3, we are going to add 3 to both sides. My signs are different here, so uh, I will subtract and keep the sign of the larger number to get positive 1. I'm rewriting b divided by 4 on my left side. Now I can take care of the 4 that is uh, dividing to b. So b divided by 4, the way we get rid of or undo division is by multiplication. So I'm going to multiply 4 to both sides to find that b is equal to 1 times 4, which is 4. In number 6, we are getting x by itself, which I'll highlight in blue, which means we need to move this negative 8, which I've highlighted in red, and this negative 4, which I have highlighted in purple. Uh, I'm going to write some operations above in orange here. Uh, 4 and x, that's multiplication, and minus 8 is subtraction. And we are always looking to take care of addition or subtraction before we get rid of multiplication or division. So we're going to get rid of the 8 that's subtracting by doing the opposite to both sides. Those will cancel out. And I'm left with negative 4x equals, I have a negative 64 and a positive 8. Um, when I have different signs, I will subtract and keep the sign of the larger number and we are going to be left with negative 56. From here I need to divide negative 4 to both sides. This negative 4 is multiplying with this x. It is not adding or subtracting. So we would not add 4 to both sides 
that would not be an appropriate um, way to get rid of it. Instead, we need to divide negative 4 to both sides. That will undo multiplication. And then we will find that x is equal to, and then we divide these out. Um, a negative and a negative means our answer is going to be positive. And 56 divided by 4 will leave us with 14. Okay, numbers 7, 8, 9, and 10 are the most important part of the warm-up today because we are going to be doing multi-step equations like these in the future when we're working with solving by substitution. So 7, 8, 9, and 10, it's really, really, really important that you follow along and understand the process. There are several steps that we take to solve multi-step equations. Um, step one will be to distribute. Step two is to combine like terms. And then step three is to, uh, for the purpose of these, we won't have um, variables on both sides of the equation. We don't have to gather them. So step three is going to be to solve the two-step equation. So there will be a, a, a remaining two-step equation that we will solve. We just practiced two-step equations in five and six. So step one, distribute. So I'm going to take this four and multiply it in. Four times two makes eight. 4 times negative 5m makes negative 20m. I'm going to rewrite the rest of my equation. Plus m equals 65. So that was step 1, distribute. Step 2, combine like terms. I have like terms in purple here of negative 20m and positive 1m. So I'm going to put those together. I'm going to count them up. And negative 20 plus 1 would be negative 19m. I need to bring my 8 down. Now I have a two-step equation. I need to get m by itself, which means I need to move the 8 and the negative 19, and I get rid of the 8 first because it is not attached to the m with multiplication or division. So I'm subtracting 8 to both sides. Those cancel out so that negative 19m is equal to 65 minus 8 which would leave us with 57. And that is positive 57 because our larger number was positive. Now, to get rid of the 19, I'm going to divide it to both sides. So when I divide negative 19 here and negative 19 here, these ones cancel out to give me m by itself equals 57 divided by negative 19, which will give us negative 3. Number 8. Again, we are going to begin or start with distributing. So I'm going to distribute this. 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 times 4b is 20b. In black here, I'm going to rewrite the, the rest of the equation that was unchanged. So everything else was changed with distribution um, in red there. And now I'm looking for like terms to combine. I have 20b and negative 2b. I can count those up. I have 20b's and negative 2b's, which means I have a total of 18b's. Now I can't forget this other 5, which I'll highlight in green can't forget about that 5, so I rewrote that as well. All right, and now we have a two-step equation to solve, so I'm going to start by subtracting 5 to both sides, which will give me 90 equals 18b, and then I'm getting rid of that 18 by dividing it to both sides. 
those cancel out and we find that B is equal to 5. Okay, continuing on, this is just so that we are familiar with, really familiar with these, because using these kinds of problems is how we are going to solve by substitution. So when we substitute to solve a system of equations, we end up with problems that look like this. Um, if I work from left to right, negative 2x isn't changing. I'm going to multiply this negative 4n times 1 to give me negative 4, and negative 4 times negative 5 to give me positive 20x. And that still equals negative 94. Now I look for like terms to combine. I'll highlight those in purple. Negative 2x and positive 20x are like terms. They both have a variable of x. And 20 minus 2 is 18. So 18x minus 4, I don't want to forget that 4, equals negative 94. So you'll see this problem is going to be very similar to the one we just did. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So the 18x is equal to negative 90. And now I'm dividing 18 to both sides. And x is equal to negative 5. And our last multi-step equation, number 10. The first step is to distribute. 15x minus 20. Well, it's negative 100. Make sure that you don't forget to rewrite everything that was unchanged. Okay, now I'm going to put my like terms together. I'll highlight them in blue this time. A positive x and a positive 15x. So 1 plus 15 means there's a total of 16x minus 20 equals negative 100. We now have a two-step equation. I'm going to add 20 to both sides first, so that 16x equals negative 80. Signs were different. I subtracted and kept the sign of the larger number. And now I am dividing 16 to both sides. And this one again is negative 5. Don't get caught up so much on the fact that the last three answers were five. Instead, understand the process. The process here was to distribute, then combine like terms, and then solve a two-step equation. OK, I'm going to solve these ones by graphing um, just to make sure that we keep this fresh because this was last unit, and I don't want us to forget how to do it. So m equals negative 1 over 1, b equals 4. In my red equation, m equals 7 over 1, and b equals negative 4. And then our arrows should be up and right for my red, and down and right for my blue. So I'll start by graphing my blue line. I begin at 4, and I count down 1, right 1. And I do that all the way across, and I can draw a, li a nice little line. For my red equation, I begin at negative 4, and I count up 7, right 1. Red and blue make purple, and my purple point is the solution to my system of equations, which is an x value of 1, 
and a y value of 3. For number 12, I'm going to color coordinate, but I'm not going to write all of my information down. So I will have a blue equation, and I will have a red equation. So for my blue equation, I'm beginning at 2, and I'm counting up 1, right 2. I could also count down 1 and left 2. For my red equation, I'm beginning at negative 3, and I'm counting up 3, right 1. Up 3, right 1. And graphing. Okay? And then we are left with a purple point. That is where it overlaps, and that is our solution. So our solution on this one, we're going to talk about as the x value of 2 get that from here, and the y value of 3. So that's how we solve by graphing. Solving by graphing is really handy when both of your equations are, are in slope-intercept form, and you have a graph. If you don't have a graph, or if both equations are not in slope-intercept form, it's kind of a pain to solve by graphing. Um, because you have to manipulate the equations to get them into y-intercept form, or slope-intercept form, I should say. Solving each system by substitution, and this is part of what's new for Unit 2 here, um, is that Um, we have one equation that we could graph, but we have one equation that is in what we call standard form, and that's when we have an x, a y, and then equals a term. Okay, so this is in standard form, and this is written in slope-intercept form. We call this slope-intercept form, just like how we were graphing. It's really easy to tell what the slope is, and it's really easy to tell what the y-intercept is. But looking at this equation, we would have to get y by itself in order to be able to tell that information and graph. So when we solve by substitution, <coughs> think about if you have a substitute teacher, that person, that substitute teacher, is showing up or is going to school in place of your regular teacher. They are substituting. They are standing in. They are replacing. And when we talk about substitution, like if you were to substitute, I don't know, um, Beyond Beef patty instead of a regular meat patty and a hamburger, you are replacing one thing with another thing. So when we are solving by substitution, we usually typically want to solve by substitution when we have one equation that is solved for x or y. Most of the time it will be solved for y. And we have another equation that is in standard form. <coughs> Uh, essentially what we are doing is we're saying we're going to look for our equation where the variable is by itself. So in this one, y equals negative 3x plus 13. And we are substituting it in for y in our other equation. I'm going to call that our blue equation. So here's my blue equation. But that red y, we can substitute with this whole value that I just put in parentheses. So I'm going to do that. And in fact, today we're not going to be solving these. We are just going to practice uh, substitution. So I'm taking my blue equation. I can do that um, over here. And I have 6x minus, and then now in parentheses, I'm going to replace y with negative 3x plus 13. And if you wanted to see where that came from, check this out. Ne oops. 
negative 3x plus 13. If I were to take all of that and see how well this works, it goes right in here, negative 3x plus 13. Okay, so I'm replacing that and then I have to finish my equation out, so equals 14. Now we have a, an equation that we could solve for. When we have equations with a y and an x in them, uh, we can't figure out what y or x is. Um, we have to get it down to one variable only in the equation. So that's how we do it. Uh, in number 14, you'll see y equals 6. So I'm going to replace that for y in here. So I'm going to write everything that I had in blue, 5x plus 3. But now instead of y, I'm going to replace it with a 6. And that's it. This now is something we could solve. We'll practice solving them more in 2.2. So again, y equals 2x minus 9. So in this y, I'm going to replace it with 2x minus 9. That's it. That's all substitution is. So we're saying, oh, OK. Uh, a substitute is equal to a teacher, right, in the classroom if your substitute shows up. So here's who our usual teacher is. But this is the substitute. And so we are going to substitute. We're going to plug that in for y in our other equation. Now make sure that your substitute goes to the right class. If my substitute is for y, I don't want to plug him in for x. I need to plug him in for y. So we have 5x minus 4. And then we're substituting in negative 4x minus 7 equals negative 14. The equations we did earlier up here is actually, these are the steps we would do to solve. So that's why that was important we looked at those. Okay, so I'm going to knock the rest of these out relatively quick. I just want you to see lots of examples so that you get the hang of it. So it becomes more and more familiar. Negative 3, and then I'm replacing that y with 6x plus 9. So I'm looking for y and y. So I'm going to replace with 3x minus 5. And then instead of y, and if you've noticed, I don't write the y in and then 2x minus 8. That would be like if the substitute showed up and the teacher showed up. That would be a confusing day. Instead, we are replacing y with 2x minus 8. So be aware that that gets replaced. Four more. Moving pretty quick here. The substituting part is actually pretty darn easy. And we practiced solving already. So in 2.2, we're just going to put all of that together. Here we go. 2x plus 6. I'm going to replace it for y there. So we have negative 5x plus 4. And then instead of y, I'm saying 2x plus 6 equals 18. And the last two in this one, y equals. So if you notice, sometimes these flip places. So it's not always just taking the top one or always just taking the bottom one. We take the one that is solved for. And that's the one that we use. y, oh, instead of y substitute showing up, 3x plus 11, and then I finish out the rest of my problem, equals 10. And finally, we are replacing y 
with negative 4x minus 4, and that all equals 0. So substitution, we're taking one thing and replacing it in the other equation.